If you've never tried one, I highly recommend it. I think when I first started seeing these come out, I was like, that's stupid, it's a chunk of wood. Why would I use it? Once I got one, I was like, oh my gosh, these are amazing, send me some more. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's time for Erica's Favorite Things. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have already seen these. I am sharing my favorite sewing notions and supplies in today's video. These are everything that I use on a regular basis and love. And just before I start, everything that I'm gonna be talking about today will be linked below the video, so just click show more. I will also be linking all of the quilts you see behind me, farmhouse or vintage falls on the wall, oh hey pumpkins at the top of my ladder, and farmhouse fall on the bottom, oh, and my September trunk will be linked as well. All right, let's dive in. We're gonna start off with one of the largest items just so that I don't forget it, and that is my self-healing table um, cutting surface. So this is from Big Mat Rotary Surface. It's a little bit different than your traditional self-healing cutting mat. Um, it's a different material, but I actually love it. It makes cutting really, really easy. You don't have to push really hard. Um, it just, your blade kind of just glides across the surface. And the other thing I love about it is the size. I have one that is 38 by 68, so it covers almost my entire table. The next size up is just almost too long, so I can't go to their next size up, but they do have an even larger one. And then of course they have smaller ones as well, so you can really get the one that fits your needs the best. I love it so much. This is my favorite cutting mat I have found so far. And again, like I said, I love that it covers my entire table. So that is item number one of my favorite items. So since we talked about our rotary cutting surface, let's talk about our actual rotary cutter. So this is my all-time favorite one. This is my Olfa Splash 45 millimeter rotary cutter. These are my favorite brand. On the back side, they have this little quick release thingy for the um, blade. So you just pull this down, your blade pops off and you can replace it. And then on the front side, you can just pull this back to expose your blade press it forward to cover your blade and that way nobody gets hurt while it's either sitting on your table or not in use. They also have these little kind of finger grips on the side so whether you're right-handed or left-handed, it doesn't matter, you can use this rotary trimmer. Like I said, I love these so much. So I actually have, I think every color they've made. Do they have another color I don't have? I don't know, let me know. Uh, but I definitely have a lot of these, so you know, don't judge me. I'm a collector of rotary trimmers. Now, the one thing that I wanted to mention that I use with my rotary trimmer is the endurance blades. They have two different blades. They have the regular ones and they have the endurance ones. They look identical, so just looking on here, you wouldn't really necessarily be able to tell that this is an endurance blade, but they are said to last twice as long. They are, of course, a little bit more expensive, so you can try them out and judge for yourself. I do feel like they last longer, so I almost exclusively buy the 45 millimeter endurance blades from Ulfa now. The other two I wanted to show, and these are a little bit different from my other ones, but these ones have a split guard on the back. So when you go to expose your blade, you can either do one side, the other side or both sides. And so that's really handy if you are right-handed or left-handed. I do have these in two different sizes. So I have the 45 millimeter and I have the 60 millimeter. Uh, the 60 millimeter is great if you're cutting through thicker things like fleece or you know multiple layers of things. These are really nice. Um, or when you're trimming off the edges of your quilt after it's been quilted to get ready for binding. This is nice because it can go through all those layers. So can the other one, but this is a little bit um, nicer to go through thicker things just because the blade is larger. But number two is gonna be my Juki TL2000 QI sewing machine. So this is a quilting machine. It is straight stitch only. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles on it, but it just works. It's a workhorse. You can handle like really thick materials. Um, I mean, the thing just goes like crazy. I think it also stitches something like 1,500 stitches per second or something. I mean, it's like ridiculously fast if you want it to be. So they do have another model, which is the 2010. That has a speed control. Mine does not have a speed control. And the price difference between the 2000 and the 2010 is about $200. If it was less of a price difference, I probably would have gone for it because it would be nice to have speed control in certain situations, especially when you're like free motion quilting on it. But you know, I wanted to save a couple hundred bucks and I really don't regret it at all. I love this machine. I do have a full review on it, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but I did wanna mention it because it is literally the most loved item in my sewing room. 
All right, the next thing I want to feature are my rulers. So I love Creative Grids rulers, and I'm gonna go through the sizes that I use the most because that's probably one of the most frequently asked questions that you guys ask me is what ruler should I get and what's the most useful size? So when I first started quilting, the size that I got was this one right here. This is six and a half by 24 and a half inches, so it's a really good size. The reason I love this one is because this is long enough to cut a piece of yardage. So if you have yardage off of the bolt, you can just lay this right on there and make long skinny cuts. You can of course use this for smaller things as well, but it's so big. Um, I really like to have something different when I'm working with smaller pieces, but this is probably one of the most used rulers in my stash. And then the next size that I got that is similar to that one is this one right here. This is six and a half by 12 and a half. Again, it's really nice size. It's just a little bit smaller and more manageable if you're working for smaller pieces. So I also use this one quite a bit. So these are kind of my two main sort of rectangular shaped ones. If I was gonna get one of these, I would just get this one because it's of course a lot more versatile. It's longer, you can cut more things. Okay, the next set that I have is all of my square rulers. And when I very first started quilting, the one that I got was this uh, 15 and a half inch square ruler because I wanted something that was square and I wanted to be able to get, you know, the most I could out of it. And so I went with kind of the big one. Again, this is a little bit hard to wield if you're doing like little say two inch squares or one inch squares. So um, it is nice to have smaller rulers for those things. So to go with this one, I ended up purchasing this one, which is just a small six and a half inch square. And so I actually, really use this one pretty much all the time because it's so much easier for those smaller blocks. Once I started quilting more, I did get a 12 and a half inch ruler. The main reason is because I do a lot of 12 and a half inch finish blocks and this just makes it a lot easier to trim those blocks down. So I think if I was going to do this again, I would have gotten the 12 and a half inch ruler to start with just because I think it's a little bit more useful. It's a little bit easier to kind of manage and I have a lot more blocks that are 12 and a half inches than I do 15 and a half. And then over the years, I added these little minis to to my collection and that's just almost been as I've needed them so I do have the little two and a half I have the three and a half I have the four and a half and then I still have the six and a half I don't have a five and a half inch square um, that's kind of on my list to get because it's really nice to have the exact size that you need um, but these rulers can be kind of pricey and so buying a set of them all at once I think if you buy all of these all at once with the five and a half in here it's around sixty or seventy dollars so they're kind of expensive um, so you know I've just been slowly building my ruler stash over the years. Okay, so let's pare this down. I obviously have a lot that I've collected over the years, but if I was just starting out and I was only gonna buy a few rulers, the ones I would for sure get are this one that is the six and a half by 23 and a half inch, this one that is a six and a half inch square, and this one that is the 12 and a half inch square. I think I would probably start off with these three. They're pretty versatile, and these are probably the most used ones in my stash. All right, next I wanna share something that I just recently purchased, and I love them so much. I haven't really used them much because um, you know, they're brand new. Anyways, I did go ahead and get a pair or a set of the Tula Pink limited edition gold and black hardware. This comes with an eight inch fabric shear and a six inch straight scissor. And these are so nice. They are as pretty as they look on camera. I think they're actually even shinier in person. Um, and then they have that fabric only right there, which is so nice. The little ones don't say anything uh, from what I can see on there, um, but look at them. Oh, they're so beautiful. So having a good pair of shears in your sewing room is a must. I love these. They're sharp. They're definitely heavy duty um, and they just cut so nice and smoothly. Along with these, the ones that I've actually had in my stash for the longest are these. These are my Ginger um, these are a limited edition color. So I try and link these for you, but I can never find these exact same ones. I think they were a holiday um, edition because they have the red and white like little holiday berries on them. Um, Ginger scissors are historically speaking pricey, um, but these are amazing. I do need to get these sharpened because I've used them so much, uh, but having just a nice pair of fabric scissors in your stash that you can use is really kind of a must in my opinion. And so I've got this nice large pair that I use for fabric and you know just cutting yardage or larger pieces. And then I have always a smaller pair like these little snips that I can use for um, just trimming threads and things like that. So um, I will link both the Tula Pink and the Ginger Scissors below. Like I said, I probably can't find these exact ones because uh, I think they're a limited holiday edition, but they do have other designs. And even if you just get the plain silver ones, the Ginger Scissors are um, amazing. 
All right, we're gonna go down to basics here, thread. So a lot of times people ask me what thread I use and I buy Aurafil 2021 50 weight thread by the cone, um, mainly because I go through this so much. So I have two cones downstairs on my long arm. I have two cones right here on my Juki. Um, and I just, I pretty much just exclusively use this colorway. Now I do have a thread wall with a very, um, you know, variety of different colors on it. Those I use when I'm doing binding or when I'm doing English paper piecing, but for the most part, um, and I think just because I'm lazy, but this kind of matches everything. So I piece with this and I quilt with this and it just makes my life a little bit easier. I wanna say these are around $40, so they're kind of pricey, but there are, is this right? 6,452 yards. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's, I'll look it up and put it on the screen, but there is a lot of thread on these cones. So definitely worth it. To go along with that, my other favorite item is my bobbin boat. So I got this bobbin boat in a sew sampler box and you can get them from Fat Quarter Shop. And when I first got it, I thought, I'm literally never gonna use that. Why would I use that? Well, once I started free motion quilting and just sewing a lot more, I found that it is a lot more handy to just be able to grab a pre-filled bobbin and keep sewing rather than stop your project, fill your bobbin, and then go on. And so now how I use this is I fill all of my bobbins for my Juki and I stack them in here. And as you can see, I've already used one. So as I use them up, I put the empty ones on this side. Once I've used all of these, that is my sign to take my machine apart, give it a nice, good, thorough cleaning, and you know, just make sure everything's working properly. And then I will refill all my bobbins and start all over again. Now I do have to oil my machine, machine every time I use it. And I do randomly as I'm sewing, I'll just, you know, do a quick little wipe out of the inside just to get some of that lint out. But this bobbin is just my reminder that I need to really do a thorough cleaning of my machine. So I love the bobbin boat because stores all my bobbins, but also because it's a reminder to clean my machine. And speaking of cleaning my machine, my next favorite item are these little Q-tippy looking things. These are from Fat Quarter Shop and they are called just cleaning brushes. I don't know, sewing machine cleaning brushes. And they just come in a pack like this and they have this little fuzz ball tip on the end of them and they are so good for cleaning your machine. You just kind of have to get near the lint in your machine and it just sticks to them and you just pull it right out. So they're also obviously small enough to get into tight spaces so I love these. Along with that in one of my boxes I got these little brushes and this is also from Fat Quarter Shop and you can see mine are kind of grimy because I use them so much but I'll use this to get out most of the stuff and then I'll use these to just kind of you know brush away any of that extra lint. So these are just easy little cleaning supplies. They're super inexpensive and I use them all the time. My next favorite thing are these um, it's so Emma stash and stores and I actually have these in a variety of colors I'm just showing this one because it's easy to hold up But I think I have like four of these in my house at this point and they have small ones And then they have larger ones that are twice the size. Here's my larger one. It holds all of my scissors I have one that has all of my um, writing utensils in it And so they're just really easy to keep next to your machine You can actually grab them and take them with you if you need to and it's just easy to grab stuff pull it out pop it back in and you're good to go. So these are called stash and stores. And again, you can get these from Fat Quarter Shop. While we're talking about scissors, let's go for the tiny scissors. These are Omni Grid snips and they are super sharp. They are also very small. I use these a ton, mainly to just trim off little extra threads. Um, I actually use these for knitting and cross stitch as well because you can really just clip so close to your cross stitch. They're super sharp and can you hear them? they have a really nice, smooth um, cut to them. So these are one of my new favorite pairs of scissors. They're only like, I think four or $5, but they're perfect. Now they are really sharp. And so in another one of my boxes, I did get this leather scissor thing. It doesn't come with these, but I do keep them in here just to keep the um, ends protected. And then also, so they're not like poking into my bag if I throw them in a knitting bag or, you know, I'm not accidentally stabbing myself because they are really, really sharp. But one of my most used items, definitely a favorite. Another that made my favorite things list are my tools from Modern American Vintage. If you haven't visited Chris's website, definitely go over there and take a look around. He makes handcrafted um, wooden sewing tools and notions, and he is the most amazing woodworking artist. There are a variety of different wood options to choose from, and I mean, they're just all beautiful. I got the Ambrosia set, so I have a Taylor's Clapper. A finger presser, so I don't actually use this as much, but it is handy. A hair marker, this is probably my most used item from his stash, if you don't know what a hair marker is, you use this uh, kind of pointed side down here to um, write 
basically on your quilt project and make lines for you to follow when you're quilting. So you can just push right along it. You can also use it on paper, actually, if you're a card maker or a scrapbooker. Um, but this one I use all the time because it makes great creases in your fabric to follow if you're gonna be quilting on it. And then of course you're not actually marking up your quilt and the press marks just come right out when you wash it. I also have a seam roller from him, which is awesome. This is like a rubber, kind of a hard rubber tip on it and it rolls super smooth. And of course the handle is gorgeous. I have a stiletto, which I use all the time as well. This is whenever I'm trying to push something tiny or thick through my machine. This really helps guide it through. Of course I had to get a seam ripper because we all need seam rippers. And then lastly, I have my point turner and you've probably seen me use this in quite a few of my videos. I always use this to turn out, to push out the corners in my little bag projects. And then I keep them all in this little tin cup here. This is a Lori Holt cup um, from Fat Quarter Shop. So again, I encourage you, if you haven't checked out Modern American Vintage, definitely check it out. You can thank me later. All right, my next favorite item, and this is a tiny one, but I love it so much, is my diagonal seam tape. This is actually from Cluck Cluck Sew. You can get it on Amazon or Fat Quarter Shop, and it's about $3. And I've had this same roll for uh, quite a while now, so you don't really use that much of it. It lasts for a long time. But this is the tape that you always see on on my sewing machine when I'm doing tutorials. So you run this tape from your needle towards you on your faceplate of your sewing machine, and then you just use it as a guide. You can use it to sew diagonally across a block. You'll line that point up with this red line right here, or if you need to sew a quarter of an inch to one side or the other, you would line it up with these black marks. And you're gonna use this anytime someone says, oh, write a diagonal line from corner to corner on the back of like 100 blocks. Don't do that. Just use your diagonal seam tape on your machine and then you can just line those corners up with your needle and the red line on your tape and just run them through and you don't have to mark any more blocks. So this has been a game changer for me. It is actually one of my top picks for my favorite items. I mean, all of these are, but if you're gonna buy anything, go get yourself some diagonal seam tape. All right, my next favorite thing are my alpha bitties and they are being stored in these cute little jars. These are again from Fat Quarter Shop. They're by Lori Holt and I just separated them out by color, but I have gray ones, blue ones, and pink ones. This is what they look like. They're little plastic pieces. They're about one inch square and they've got letters on them. This particular gray set came with A through Z in large letters. It also goes back through the alphabet with double A, double B. And that's really helpful if you have a lot of pieces on a project. And then it also has numbers and I think it goes one through 20. So these are super helpful. If you've never used alphabeties or labeled any of your pieces before, um, if you've done any of my patterns, they actually all have labels on them. So it will say cut 10 of these these size pieces and label them with the A. And so I will pre-cut all of my pieces when I'm doing a quilt. I will label each stack with its appropriate letter. And then when your pattern says get a piece A and sew it to a piece B, you actually have them already labeled so you don't have to like remeasure or remember what you cut. You just grab those two pieces and sew them together. So it makes it really easy. If you have a pattern that does not label your pieces like that, which a lot of them don't I have found, um, I will actually go through and label them myself in on my pattern and then I will label them when I cut them. And so it's just a nice way to keep everything organized. Um, and especially if you have a piece that's like two by two and then another piece that's two and a half by two, those are really similar and so it's really nice to have those labeled so you don't get them mixed up. So these are called alpha bitties. You can get them at F Fat Quarter Shop and again, they come in blue, pink, and gray. My next favorite item are called Wonder Clips and if you've watched any of my videos, you have seen these in action. These are just chunky little plastic clips put out by Clover um, and they just look like this and you can use them to clip together your layers. I use them on almost every bag project that I do and it's just a nice way to keep things together while you're sewing, especially if it's too thick to use pins on. So I do use pins. I'll show you my favorite ones in a minute here, but Wonder Clips are probably one of my most used items. The other thing that I will use these for is if I'm gonna pre-cut out a quilt and I have all my pieces pre-cut out, I have Jax here. If you guys don't know who Jax is, he's my cat. He loves to get on my table and mess up all my pieces while I'm trying to sew. So sometimes what I will do is I will cut those little stacks, I will lay them, label them with my alpha bitty, and then I will actually use my Wonder Clip to clip that alpha bitty to that stack of fabric. And then that way I can put it on a board or a tray and it's a lot harder for Jax to, you know, fling them everywhere with his tail or he like lays on them and rolls around anyway. So my Wonder Clips are definitely one of my favorite sewing notions. And then if you're curious, this little bowl that they're sitting in is a free tutorial here on YouTube. I think I called it like um, 
quilted notions bowl. <laughs> I'll link it below. Next up are my machine gears. These are quilting gloves. And if you look at the tips of these, you will see that they are a different material. These are a sticky kind of tacky sub. It's like almost like a rubber on the end of them. And that really helps you grip your fabric when you're quilting, especially if you have a nice big heavy quilt on your table. And it makes it a lot easier to move your quilt around when you're hand um, quilting, especially on your regular sewing machine. I would not advise trying to quilt a quilt without some kind of quilting gloves on. Now there are a lot of different brands. Machingers happen to be my favorite. They have grip on both the front and backs of the fingers. Um, and so these are the ones I use the most. Whichever brand you use, I highly recommend having some kind of quilting gloves on if you're going to be quilting on your home sewing machine. Just makes your life a lot easier, a lot less strain on your back and your shoulders as you're hunching over trying to push things and you just can get a much better grip. Things aren't slipping around. So definitely a must for machine quilting on your home sewing machine. All right, my next favorite item are these little house pins. They are A, super cute. Look at this adorable little glass jar. Um, but B, they're very sharp. They're not super long, so they're perfect for piecing together your quilt blocks. The other thing I love is they're super sharp. They're also very thin, so they don't make very large holes in your fabric, which is awesome. Some pins that I've used are pretty bulky, and so when you pull the pin out, you can see that hole where it is. Now, most of the time that washes out, uh, but these are just so thin that I really just love them. The only criticism I have is that the head of these pins is really tiny, which is helpful um, because again, it doesn't take up very much room when you're pinning together. However, if you're just trying to grab one of these out of your pin jar, it can be kind of hard to get a hold of, um, but otherwise that's really it. These really still are my favorite pins. My second favorite thing is the actual magnetic pin bowl. They have this giant magnet on the bottom and then of course they're magnetic so all of my pins stay inside. This is particularly helpful if you are sewing. I always take my pins out and just kind of set them on my machine. I can just run this over my machine and it'll just pick all my pins back up. Now they have a variety of these. One of my favorite ones are these. You can see this one's a little more well-loved and scratched up but these are from Pleasant Home and I believe Riley Blake picked them up and so now Riley Blake puts these out. You can get them in a variety of colors. I have probably probably four or five of these throughout my house. My daughters have some. I have some here in my sewing room, but magnetic pin bowls are awesome. They make it a lot easier. You, you don't accidentally hit your pin bowl and have your pins go everywhere because they just stay inside. All right, let's talk irons. I get a ton of questions about my iron, how I like it. Um, and I have been using the Oliso Pro for about four years, I wanna say now. This is actually my second one. They did send me the newer version. My old one was pink and I actually still use both of them. The pink one is now designated to um, fusible fleece and things with you know any kind of fusing on them this one is dedicated to anything non-fusible and i will say that i love this iron and i will be doing a giveaway for this in my um, holiday gift guide this year so stay tuned for that so i do have a full tutorial on this iron on my channel so i'm not going to go into too much detail here but i do want to point out a few things if you've never used the oliso irons before they do have these feet on the bottom that pop them up from your sewing table so you keep them flat on your sewing surface when your hand leaves this handle up here the feet pop out and it raises it up off of the surface and then when you grab it the feet retract up into it and then you can iron on it. Now it does have a steam reservoir in there. It also has several different settings on there for steam and heat as well. And you just can turn this knob to change your settings. And then you just move this knob to change your steam settings. And then you can spray or steam with these buttons on the top and the little spray comes out the front. So it has a ton of features on it. I will say that I actually don't use the steam in this iron very often at all, or I haven't ever used it in this one, um, mainly because in any iron, if you're putting water in it and you leave the water sitting in it, that is a recipe for getting all that black gunk to spray out the bottom. Now with my other Lisa iron, I do use steam in it. And my tip for you is that when you're done using your iron for the day, dump any excess water out of the iron, turn off your steam setting, and then you can unplug it, turn it off. And that will help you when you turn it back on the next day, you won't have to worry about any black gunk spraying out of it you can just refill it with water, turn your steam back on, and you're good to go. And that's not just for these irons, that's actually a good tip for any iron. 
I actually went through, I think, three Rowentas before I finally switched to the Oliso. I've never had black gunk spray out my Oliso, although I think some people have said that's happened, but that is why. You don't wanna leave water sitting in that reservoir overnight with your steam on, because as soon as you plug your iron in and it starts getting hot, it's just gonna steam all of that leftover icky water out. So you're gonna end up with brown spots on your fabric. So that's a tip for any iron, not just the Oliso, pretty much any iron that you have that takes steam. Dump out your water at the end of the day, turn off your steam setting, and then turn off your iron and you should be good to go. Now all that said, I actually don't use steam in these because these irons are quite, quite heavy. My arm is already getting tired of holding it up. And so I feel like the weight of the iron itself, you just don't really need the steam. If I'm gonna be adding anything else, I'm gonna add either a spray bottle of water and then press on it, or I'll use my Mary Ellen's Best Press, which I'll show you here in a minute. Um, but otherwise, I don't actually feel like I need it with these because they're so heavy. You really just almost don't even need the steam. They also get super, super hot. And then on the bottom, they have this new kind of non-stick ceramic plate technology. Super smooth. I love the plate on this. It just glides across your fabric like butter. It's awesome. Definitely one of my favorite plates that I've ever tried. So the ProSmart is my very favorite, but I also have a mini. And this one I actually use when I'm working on really small blocks or if I'm gonna be traveling. So if I go sew with a quilting guild or something like that, I'll bring my tiny one with me. One thing you need to be aware of is these do get very hot. So I usually turn my heat down because they get really, really hot. This is a little plate for it to set on so you can set it directly on your table, but it can get really hot and kind of go through that. So I would just be careful what surface you're putting this on. Um, there are holes in here, obviously, for the heat to escape, and so you just don't want to be accidentally burning your surface. It has that same coating on the plate, so the ceramic uh, non-stick technology, which is awesome. And I will say this little iron gets just as hot as that big one, and it does just as good of a job. So if you're traveling or you're working on really tiny pieces, the mini is the way to go. Otherwise, 90% of the time, I use my ProSmart. I will be doing an Aliso giveaway in my upcoming holiday gift guide for this year for 2022. So stay tuned for that. But for now, I do have a 15% off discount coupon if you want to get something now. I'll put that on the screen right here. I will also put that information below the video. All right, since we just talked about irons, let's talk about my best press. So Mary Ellen's best press is probably one of my new best friends. I use this in a ton of different ways. So it's technically a light, I think they call it a fabric stabilizer. Oh, sizing alternative. Um, so it's basically a light starch or a sizing alternative. They smell amazing. This one is lavender. It's probably one of my favorites. They also have an unscented if you're sensitive to that kind of thing and you just don't want any scent at all, um, but they work wonders. So you can use these in a variety of different ways. I actually have a video on how to use it, so I will link that below as well. But essentially, you can just spray your fabric before you cut it out. You just iron it until it's dry. You can spray one side or you can flip it and spray both sides if you want it a little bit stiffer. And then you can cut out your pieces and they don't get all wonky or stretchy on you when you're sewing. This is a great thing to use if you're gonna be working on bias seams. So if you are cutting something and then you're cutting on the diagonal, you definitely wanna Mary, Mary Ellen's best press it before you do that. That way that diagonal will have a little more stability and structure and it won't stretch. I sometimes forget to do this or after I'm pressing a block, I'll realize it's starting to get wonky. So sometimes I will actually spray my block when it's completely done. I'll just spray it with this and just give it a really nice good press. And again, it just gives it that structure and stability. I have also pressed little pieces after they're cut because I'm like, ooh, this one's gonna be tiny. I forgot to spray it. I'm just gonna spray it now and it works just as good. So you can kind of use this anytime during your sewing process. It doesn't shrink your fabric like a hardcore starch would, so you don't have to worry about that. You can just use this whenever you need it. Sometimes I use it on some blocks and not on others, and I've never had an issue. So I'm probably breaking some of the starching rules doing that, but I've never had any problem with it. So this has quickly become one of my favorite products. Now, I know we already talked about clappers when we talked about my Modern American Vintage stuff, and I do have three clappers in my sewing room. So I use this one. This one is nice and long and skinny, and it's super heavy. As a matter of fact, I think this is heavier than my Riley Blake Taylor's clappers, uh, but I do love these as well. These come in two different sizes. I have the small one and I have the large one. These are perfect for getting those nice flat seams. Now, if you've never used a Taylor's clapper before, how you use it is you just press your fabric and then lay one 
one of these on top of that seam and just let it cool right there on your pressing surface. Once the block is cool, you can remove this, pick it up, and you have amazingly flat seams. How they work is the wood actually absorbs the heat from the top, the uh, pad that you're ironing on kind of absorbs it from the bottom, and um, I think they say that the weight doesn't have anything to do with it, but I honestly think that it does help to have something heavy pressing flat those, those seams. I don't see how it wouldn't help, um, but what they say is because it helps absorb the heat. So anyways, that's how they work. If you've never tried one, I highly recommend it. I think when I first started seeing these come out, I was like, that's stupid, it's a chunk of wood. Why would I use it? Once I got one, I was like, oh my gosh, these are amazing, send me some more. All right, let's talk about planning projects. So I obviously do my own designs, I do a lot of projects, and so I like to keep some kind of planner so that I have notes and information on all of those projects. Now, I do have these planners available in my quilt sh in my store. Um, this front has been redesigned, so the one in my store looks a lot um, bougier, much nicer and prettier. This is pretty basic right now, but this is the ultimate planner, and in it, it has sections for quilting, knitting, and crochet, stitching, like cross stitching, hand spun yarn. It also has EPP English paper piecing and then it has a notes section. And I like this one because I have all of my projects in one planner. But if you don't do all of those different crafts, you can buy them individually so you can get just the knit and crochet one or just the quilting one and just use it that way. These are PDF downloads right now. So what that means is you can download the planner and then you can print off as many pages of the inside planning pages as you want. If you only want a few or if you want a bunch because you know you have a lot of projects, you can print them off as many as you want. And then I took mine to my um, just local office supply store and I had them add this spiral binding to the end. I also had them do um, a lamination on the front cover and on the back cover. That makes a lot uh, more sturdy and durable. And then I do have a video on this as well, um, but on the inside, it's just got who the planner belongs to. It has some little encouraging quotes here and there, and then each section has a header page. They all have information pages that are geared towards that topic. So this one is for quilting and sewing, and it just tells how many strips or squares you can get out of a cut of fabric. It has how to calculate backing and batting, some more details on fabric cutting, and then it has some dream projects or future projects, things that you want to be able to do that you don't want to forget about. And again, you can print as many of these pages as you like. And then inside, let me find a blank one because you know, I'll be giving away trade secrets here. And then inside it actually has your project planning pages. And these are gonna be different based on the craft. This is just the quilting and sewing one, but it's got project start dates, end dates, the name, the designer, the finished size. I like having that on there because I always forget how big things are. And when you guys ask, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I have to go measure it or look at my pattern. It's got little progress charts here so you can check them off as you go so you don't forget any of your steps. And then it has supply list. It has some sketch area in case you wanna draw some things. You could also use this area to glue little fabric swatches too so you can see what fabric you used for that project. And then it has some notes here on the bottom. And then at the very end, it also has just plain notes notes pages where you can put down ideas or you know just anything you want in that note section and so I printed mine out I have all of my sections and then I just put these little sticky tabs on them um, you can also add those at your office supply store if you have them print it for you they will add um, divider tabs which is nice and then you have all your projects in one area so I'm loving using this planner one thing that I didn't show in here that I have recently added to the new ones is a overview page so you can have a list of all of the projects projects that you're working on. There's a little um, thing across the top that kind of has like phases that it's in. And then you just check off all the little boxes as you go. And so you can kind of keep track of all the projects you have instead of having to flip through each page, you already kind of know what's in your books. The other thing I like having a planner for is because, especially if I'm gifting an item, I won't necessarily remember that I made it. So sometimes I will take pictures and also glue that into here on my project page so I can remember what it looks like since I've gifted it. So that's also kind of nice. It's like a scrapbook of all the things that I've made. So leave me a comment below letting me know if you use a planner for your projects or not, if you just kind of make them and forget about them, or if you take pictures, or how you remember all of the fun things that you've made, especially if you've gifted them. Another one of my favorite and most used items is my 505 basting spray. Now I have tried different basting sprays before and I found that they really gum up my machine or they don't work or they almost like stick too much. And so 505 has really been my go-to. I don't feel like it gums up my needle as much and it's also removable so you can reposition if you're not liking how it's looking. Um, and it also sticks. So if you are going to be doing free motion quilting, 
this is my go-to item. You do wanna spray this in a well-ventilated area. Sometimes I even put on my mask so I'm just not breathing in all those fumes, um, but it works really well. And I prefer this over pin basting because I just feel like it holds my fabric and I don't get all that puckering when I'm trying to quilt. So 505 basting spray is my fave. Another favorite item of mine are my quilt labels. So I have a whole little stack of these. I actually get these from Sweetwater and they have a subscription called their tagged subscription. And every month you get a personalized label from them and they are all different. They're super cute. They're kind of seasonal um, and they're just adorable and they're just a perfect way to label your quilt patterns um, or your quilts. And so I always love these and I keep them right by my sewing machine so that I don't forget to label my quilts. So I love labeling my quilts. I think it's an important part in the process, kind of gives history along with that quilt, especially if it's getting passed down. Um, you can get these ones from sweetwaterco.com. You can also get some really cute personalized labels from Etsy. So that's everything I have to share with you today. I know that was a lot of products, but those are all my for sure favorites. I don't mention anything on this channel that I don't love and use. So you can hopefully trust anything that you've seen on here. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to leave a comment below letting me know what your favorite product from today's video was. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you like these kind of videos, a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps me out and lets me know to keep making them for you. You can also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you next time. So if you follow me on, now, like I said, I love, so when you go to, exp... there are a variety of different wood um, to, there are a variety of different, Bleh. okay, what's next? Alphabetties everywhere. It also has um, EPP. Bleh.